Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. RPM. Oh, this thing sounds good. I haven't got air filters on it yet. It really helps it sound so good. I'm going to enjoy this car. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. And it's a very, very exciting day today because in the post I have now got a V5 which has got some new information on it because it has changed one word on this thing and it now says historic and that means that although I've had a lot of advice and good information on the comments admittedly some of it contradictory regarding cars becoming historic status and then not needing tax and not needing MOT I do now finally have it on a piece of paper that says historic tax no tax needed which means basically it's MOT exempt which means I can take it for a test drive at last for the first time since the engine went in about two years ago, I can actually take this car for a drive down the road and see what it's like with a 4.6 in it because I haven't had this car on the road for a number of years. The three and a half litre stopped working a bunch of years ago, then I took it out a bunch of years after that and then it's been sitting around semi-unfinished. People say I don't finish my projects, but look, here we are with a finished project. Now I have been polishing it up uh, while it's been parked here, however, uh, the dust does still blow in across the fence and it does still get dirty and I was going to give it another clean up before I film this video but really I'm just too excited to get it out on the road and it looks like it might rain again so I'm just going to drive it but first though I do have two things to do now you may recall when I did the LED light video on the MX-5 a couple of weeks ago a company called Oxito supplied a whole load of LEDs for it and uh, they gave us a discount code for the thing they've sent me a couple of amber LED lights because I want to stick them in the front. Some people love the idea of the uh, the clear Italian spec, I think it was, we decided. Front indicator lenses. Some people hated it, but I loved it. Anyway, so I've got some amber LED lights for that. Also, because this car hasn't driven in a while, I'm going to do something else. They've sent me through another thing which is worth trying. This is, and I've got a number of jump packs, and I haven't had a bad one yet, to be honest, of the jump packs. There is a link to this in the description below as well, and I think there's a discount code for this as well. This is an Oxito jump start pack, but it's also got a tyre pump built into it, which is a little bit unusual, so I'm going to quickly whack it on these tyres and just make sure they're all at a sensible pressure before I go and head off down the road in this thing. Oh, and uh, while we're playing with 4.6 litre V8s, I did go and try to move this car to get the bins out this morning, and, uh, and I stole the extension lead for the battery charger to keep it maintained a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and it's gone down rather a lot. Hang on, Let's see if we can now fire up this big old 4.6 with the jump pack on it. That sounds more healthy. Yes! This morning when I tried to move the car, it was literally just a nothing. So that is a significant improvement. Let's go pump those P6 tyres up. We wake this thing up. PSI, that sets down to, I don't know, 30 PSI. It's probably a bit high for this, to be honest, but 29. Normally do 28, 30. Let's try that. That's shown 27. Done. That is a handy little thing to have in the boot for jump starting and pumping your tyres up. And I think it's got a torch in it as well. Discount link in the description below if you fancy one of those. Right, let's get this thing on the road. Right, now then. Okay, so the only thing that's wrong with this car now is the bonnet catch. It's on the safety catch and I've uh, actually put some wire around it to try and hold it down tight because um, that's the only thing I can't sort out. I've spent ages on it myself. My dad came around and he spent a long time trying to figure it as well. We just cannot work out why it will either lock down so completely that you can't undo it without a spanner, or it will just not latch at all. Um, my only thought maybe is the hinges need adjusting at the back end of the bonnet, but having taken it for a little test drive, I'm gonna run it back up to Hawk Classics, the people who got the thing started in the first place, and um, they've said they can have a look at that and try and sort it out for me, and they do a safety inspection on it as well at the same time. But I wanna take it for a quick test run now, get some fresh fuel in it, and just see how this thing actually drives. I was going to describe it as on the button, but it's a little slow st start. It's showing as new, well, say a quarter of a tank. The, it's showing some fuel in it. Maybe I've run out of petrol. Maybe I need to go and get some petrol in another car first. Do you know what? I think that's actually out of fuel. 
Right, so back, got petrol in the car and I've been trying it a few more times and guess what, it still doesn't work. I've tried it with the fuel reserve tap pulled, I've tried it with the choke all the way in, all the way out. It just fires up for a second, runs and then dies. In fact, I might have been killing the battery now, so I might even not do that anymore. That's all I'm getting, and I don't know why. I wonder if there's some stale fuel in the system. Uh, that, you know, I did drain it out and it was, it's been running really well, so there shouldn't really be any stale fuel in there. It's got a gallon of fresh V-Power on top of everything else that was in there already, even though it was showing above that first notch on the fuel gauge, so it's nearly a quarter of a tank of fuel, so it shouldn't really be low on petrol. I don't understand it. Maybe it just really doesn't want to be driven. This car has not wanted to be driven for a long time. At the weekend, Mrs. F was saying, now that car's running, that's worth a bit of money, isn't it? You should sell that. We could pay off a few few debts and things and uh, have a holiday because it's you know, worth a bit of cash, a car like this. And I was like, no, I've wanted a P6 with a 4.6 in it for absolutely years. I want to enjoy that thing. And Mrs. F might be getting her wish. Volvo gets a stay of execution. P6 goes on car classic. I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Let's try one more time. Well, last time, then I've got to go do something else. Crap. Right, I'm going to put the battery on charge. I'm going to unwire the uh, bonnet and have a look at it. First of all, I've got to go and finish an edit for someone. I guess I'm not getting my drive in this car today, which is really annoying. Right, so annoyingly, this car has been running so perfectly until I wanted to actually drive the thing and now it won't drive at all. So, to me, this smells like fuel starvation. So I'm going to start by probing into the fuel system. Uh, I can't really see into this slightly murky old BL style fuel filter. This uh, fuel pump has been tipping and tapping away quite happily, but I'm just going to pop out this here, see if any fuel is squirting out of there or not, because there's a possibility there's no fuel coming through. Oh, we got a gusher. Well, kind of weirdly, although that's pumping through really fast, that looked really oddly yellow, that fuel. I was wondering if we've hit a pocket of bad petrol somehow. Could it be because I pulled the, uh, the reserve tank and there was an extra bit of gunk in the reserve fuel lines and that's gushed it through? I'm going to squirt that over the front of the car and get rid of it. I don't know if I showed up on camera or not, but that went from quite a dark yellow to the clear colour you would expect. So possibly there's been a pocket of, well, just stale fuel in the system somehow. I don't know how, because we cleaned it out so far and the car's been driving up and down the drive for the last couple of weeks while I'm waiting for the V5 to turn up. So hopefully that's cleared it and it'll start now. Right, take 19. Let's see if we can actually get the car started this time. I hope it was just a pocket of bad fuel in there. Come on, baby. I mean, it's cranking like crazy. That is what I'd come to expect from this car. Well, that's really, really strange. How on earth can a car that's been running happily for a couple of weeks have a patch of bad fuel in the lines. It must have just been sucking it through from the reserve line. It must have got low, sucked it from the reserve line, and that was that. Right, I'm going to have a quick play with the bonnet one last time, see if I can make it either latch down solidly or, uh, or work correctly. <laughs> the novelty of that. And then we can actually take this thing for a drive, like I planned to yesterday. I'm not entirely sure how, but I seem to have just lucked into uh, putting this in exactly the right place and having... Oh, nearly. I spoke too soon. It was working. It always works off camera and then fails on camera. Oh, it's catching on that top little... But at least it's latched shut. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment because it's latched shut. It's going nowhere. I can drive the car without the bonnet flying up in my face, which is a quality good move. Right, OK. Bonnet is now latched shut. Fresh, fresh petrol. Yay! Now... Again, for the second time in as many days. I'll sit by one go because I'm on a slope. Let's get us out of here and have a go. 
at driving away. First drive in the V8. First actual drive on a road. I'm quite excited by this. First drive, I'm gonna drive away from my road and I'll turn the camera off, find some lanes somewhere I can show you the thing on the move. I'm back home already, a little quicker than planned. There was a bit of a vibration from the back. I'm gonna make sure all the wheel, make sure the wheel nuts are tightened up properly. Right, first drive, take three. Those rear lug nuts, they're up like half a turn loose. Not, not loose loose, but just not really tight up. So let's take this out on the road again and see what happens. Better safe than sorry. It's been up and down in the air a few times. Right, I've driven a couple of miles. Fingers crossed, everything's going okay. I'm just gonna turn it off for the moment and um, just double check we're not on fire or anything. I'm gonna switch over to the GoPro for a second. Right, forgive the poor audio at this point because I've switched over to the GoPro. There's no microphone attached to it. I'm just having a look around, make sure there's no smoke coming off the wheels. Hubcaps aren't boiling hot, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I hope I put that hubcap somewhere else that's not on the road somewhere. I'm gonna have to look for it on the way home. Okay, we're not on fire, which is, which is positive. I always go for not on fire over on fire as a right. rule. I couldn't see anything on fire, which is, which is good. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, nothing's hanging off it, no puddles underneath it, that kind of thing. It's first drive, anything could happen. So I'm not going too far, I'm staying off the big roads. No power steering, obviously, because the pump is still in the boot. Yeah, 1973 cold hazard lights, how's that? Gets a lot of looks, this car. That's interesting. <laughs> now, I'm not going to do a burnout just yet. I'm just going to ease it into just gently driving. It is so smooth. So, so smooth. That V8 is lovely. If you're hitting indicated 40 miles an hour, probably in third gear, I guess. First time this thing's been out, first in a while. Oh, it's a lot of wobble and wonder. Yeah, I won't be hitting 100 mile an hour just yet in this thing. That vibration is completely gone. There was a little bit of clonk, clonk, clonk from various points in the, in the, the transmission. But I think that, I don't know, it's just old tyre rubber that's being used for the first time in anger in a long time. But it seems, I mean, touching, touching Formica, it's pretty good. Temperature holding okay. I haven't reached full temperature yet. Fuel hasn't really moved, which is good. I mean, it's going to be thirsty, but hopefully we'll get more than five miles down the road. Oil pressure good. Ammeter is charging. I do have a fresh AA membership as well. It is, this is good. I was going to do a quick brake check because I haven't really done a high speed brake check yet. Oh, vibration, but there, there's, there's the junk junk, that shunt. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that would be. Oh, I can smell brakes now. I can actually hear the brakes now as well. This is one of those drives where, on the one hand, I want it to be completely event free because that means I've got a good working car. On the other hand, though, I need some kind of drama to make this video exciting. Obviously there's going to be a few sort of smells and rattles and things. The car hasn't driven, I think, in 10 years. And this is its first ride down the road in all that time. The tyres were actually brand new just before the car got parked up and they've been in the dark ever since. So you can kind of treat them as a couple of year old tyres rather than decade old tyres, I think. I'm not going to change them just yet, obviously, because I think it might be changing the wheels on it. Now I've got two options for an oil catch can, not an oil catch can, a water catch can for the radiator in case it does get hot in traffic. Oh, listen to that noise, that's beautiful. This thing sounds amazing. Uh, I'm gonna go around the roundabout and go back the way I came, because it gets busy over there and if it conks out somewhere. Whee! I want to stay on the A roads, or the B roads more specifically. It's 
something fall off this car. I hope not, someone hooted. Wow. So far, again, touching for Micah, this is proving to be a successful test drive. And it's starting to feel like a car I could just drive all day. So good. Having spent so much time and agonised over so many tiny details on this thing to get to this point, I really should be in a position where it should just turn the key and go. It shouldn't be a mystery or a surprise that it's working. I've used this road before for filming. It's a dead end, so hopefully not going to hit anything coming the other way. Oh, listen to that V8. That bu -bu 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 What a weird noise. That sounds like the prop shaft being unhappy. Right, so a little walk around the car again. So this is, is the first actual proper drive in the P6 V8 with the 4.6 in it. And it is so, so good. It is such a better engine than the one I was driving, the original three and a half. I had in it years and years ago. I've driven quite a few V8s since I last drove this one in anger many years ago now. And every single one of them has been better than my old three and a half was. With its new heart transplant, this is now a completely different animal. Obviously, there are teething troubles. There's that weird vibration going on, which I, I'm guessing must be the prop shaft or, or something like that. So we'll get it up in there, make sure everything's tightened up and aligned and all that kind of thing. But when it's just cruising, it's so silky smooth, it's amazing. It's only when we actually uh, put a foot down and go for it, then it suddenly starts blah, 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 and it doesn't like something. So I don't know, we'll, we'll check that out before we drive it too much further. Ooh, what's that down there? Yeah, that's why it's polishing, I think. But this is, this is a huge moment. This, I'm gonna tell you, warrants a happy dance, happy dance in the Rover. Woo We're in the car and it's driving. Fantastic, amazing. Let's drop the microphone, no. This old thing is actually mobile again. It is a car once more, which is frankly something I was starting to think would never actually happen again. So, phew, right. I'll take a couple of photos of it for the thumbnail, then we'll get back on the road again. Oh my goodness, it's so good to be able to just turn the key. Don't do that to me, Carl. <laughs> and tickle the thing away. It's the dirtiest this thing's got in movement in a decade. Oh, this is so good. My son's desperate for me to come and pick him up from school in this thing. Obviously, it's the coolest thing in the world. But I'm not 100% confident in it just yet. I'm going to drive it one or two more times before I risk it in traffic. Now, obviously, just because it's on the road does not mean it's a finished project. It's a long way from that. I will be running up to Hall Classics at the week, well not at the weekend, fairly soon, um, where they can give it like a safety inspection kind of a thing, just run through it, make sure everything's bolted on underneath and there's no, well nothing I've missed really, just get an expert eye on a ramp to have a, a check over of the thing, make sure it's all good. But this car, well, obviously we've got a whole bunch of things to do. I'm occasionally getting a little bit of a whiff of brakes in the back of the car, so possibly, I don't know if it's binding or if it's, I don't know, just a bit sticky because it's been not used in so long. And it might just need to be driven a couple of times to just sort everything out. But the bonnet needs a little bit more alignment. I think I've got the driver's side one sorted out, but the passenger side is still sitting a little bit low. That might still help with the, uh, the catch working properly, because that was the difference between before and after. I changed the hinge, I put some shims underneath the hinge. I've got some paint still to do on it. I never got the, um, the rear valance under the back bumper painted, so that's still looking a bit shabby. And the door shuts are still in the original Corsica blue as well, they need painting. Change up, change up, change up. Okay, it's not gonna change up, we're stuck in second, unless this is, th this is third, perhaps, I don't know. Um, don't like automatics. <laughs> as you know. There are little rubber, wind and water baffle things that should go into the door shuts and those aren't fitted yet, they need to go on there. Uh, what else do we need to do? It's quite a host of things actually. The side trim. 
the painter who painted this did it one panel at a time because I was on a massively tight budget. Oh, the heater's on, no wonder I'm boiling. Um, I was on a really tight budget, so I took him one panel a month. And some panels, he left the trim holes so I could mount the stainless steel side trim back on. Others he filled. So I need to very, very gingerly, carefully, drill out those holes or drill some new holes so I can mount the side trim, make it look complete. Uh, I need to have a little more of a fettle with that front bonnet catch, or the bonnet catch, because currently that is, uh, well, it's kind of 90% there, but at least it's holding the bonnet shut, so that's good. Then I can put the grill back on. I haven't actually fitted those uh, amber LED bulbs just yet. I need to go and put them on too. I got sidetracked with the thing not starting yesterday. A whole bunch of stuff didn't happen. Then once I'm satisfied that it's all running properly, I've got to make these new door cards for it. I'm gonna, I've got some tatty old ones that came with the car. They were water damaged from a long time ago. Use them as a template, make some new ones. Put some speakers here in the door. That'll make a big difference to the car. If I'm gonna risk going down a short stretch of dual carriageway, I'm getting dangerously overconfident here. Oh, I wish I hadn't done that now. Now over there is a bright yellow Lamborghini Urus. I'm tempted to pull up next to it and see which car gets the most looks. <laughs> I'm sure the guy will probably knife me. Oh, wing mirrors. I've got a pair of bullet mirrors to go on these doors. This car, being a 73, didn't come with mirrors. Uh, the bright white 2000 didn't either. And I fitted uh, what were actually relatively affordable back in the 90s, um, original correct spec mirrors to the car. Or well, at least I fitted one on the driver's side so I could do the motorway on the way to college. But this one has never had any and I bought some bullet mirrors which apparently are rubbish but look really cool. And the holes that were on the passenger door were from a previous mirror because that's a second hand door and they're in the wrong place. So such is life. Oh this is this is definitely getting better with use. I mean it's not gone far and I've not redlined it yet or anything. I mean obviously it's a new build engine, I'm still very much running it in. I need to do a couple of hundred miles, then do a complete oil change. It's still got the running in oil for the moment. Fresh oil, fresh filter. Don't go too far with it, just do like 100 miles or something. We're not even that for 50 miles, really. There we go. Everything is getting better. The more I use it, the better it gets. I just love the sound of it. It's amazing how just the sound of a V8 can be utter instant redemption for a car. Yesterday I was on the verge of selling it again. Today, just listen to it creamily cruise around, just purring along, and life couldn't be better. Yeah, I'm not even trying with this thing at the moment. It has got really good pickup. Oh yeah, I remember another thing, thinking about the rear valance which needs painting. The rear bumper is actually a little bit scabby and it's got a weird kind of crusty hole, not hole in it, like a ding in it. Rear bumpers are utter hen's teeth on these cars, so the hardest part of anything to find. So uh, I'm not quite sure I'm going to do about that one. A bit tricky thing to sort out. I was going to go back down this road again because it's a really nice road. And there's a little bit of furious trivia to go with that little bit of, bit of tarmac. It is idling a bit fast still, I'll be honest, but I'd like to get it on a rolling road and properly tuned before I uh, make any changes to that. Oh, it's so good. I'm curious the temperature hasn't really moved beyond the bottom of the green. I mean, it's a cold dish day, and I'm not driven that far, and it's been moving most of the time as well. That's something worth looking at, but I do have well, I've got two expansion tanks now. I've got a modern style with a thousand apertures on it, and I've got basically an oil catch can. All it really needs is just something for the overflow to go into. Oh, you forget how rolly P6s are. Now, the reason I came back down this road is because 
when I did my first ever talking to the camera video on furious driving, it was in a Rover P6, it was in my white 2000, and it was down this road. So, not the end of this project, but the, the near the culmination of this project, back where it all began for the channel. It's, it's kind of a nice thing to do, I think. Ooh, Boaty. <laughs> so yeah, I want to be lowering this thing. Uh, people have said, oh, you can't do it, it's too hard, it's too complicated, etc. There are lowered P6s out there, so I know it can be done. There are things you do, and it's not by any means insurmountable. And I want to change it to manual gearbox. This old three-speed, it does the job, it makes the car down, go down the road, but it saps an awful lot of power. These old Borgwana slush Gifomatics. They just drain so much MPG, well, MPG and BHP, out of an engine. Get that gone, get a nice five-speed manual in there. Absolutely transform this car. Do you know what? It really is true what they say. Cars love to be used, because the further I've driven this, I've just done another five miles since I last looked at the odometer, the better it's got and it's getting smoother and creamier. It's getting less kind of lumpy in the drivetrain. Oh, it's fantastic. Ah, oh, this is good times. I now have two 4.6 litre V8s on the fleet, two P6s on the fleet, which potentially can drive. And finally, after a very long time, I have my dream black 4.6 litre V8 Rover P6. This is a very good day. Happy days, happy dance. Oh, steer the car. Happy crash. Oh, those brakes could be a little better, actually. I don't know if that's just because they're tired from lack of use or fighting about 250 horsepower. P6s are the absolute best. They are such an incredible car. If you're not familiar with the Rover P6, they came out in 1963 as a two-litre with an incredible base unit construction like a Citroen DS. The idea being that they could change the way the car was built halfway through and just facelift it, but they never really did beyond a few little tiny details. But it was such a good handling car, such a good looking car, it just sold like hotcakes. Two-litre, 2.2, single carb, twin carb. They needed a new flagship and uh, They'd managed to get hold of the, uh, the V8 from Buick, which is what this is, and they'd been working on a six-cylinder, straight six, but it just meant lengthening the nose and upsetting the handling. And because they've been designing this thing to take a jet turbine, and you can actually see Jet 4 up at the British Motor Museum at Gaydon, um, yeah, they had an engine bay that was the perfect size, and that weird front suspension, the cantilever, front springs and everything, just meant you could pop the V8 straight in and suddenly one of the greatest British hot rods of all time was born. Back in the 70s, when uh, bank robbers were nicking Mark II Jags and S-type Jags because they were the quickest thing on four wheels, the police couldn't afford those, but they could afford Rover V8s, which could keep up with them. Oh, an E30, working for its living. That's a weird noise. Torque converter, maybe. God, I thought I was walking on for a second then. <laughs> this thing's got so much go, I mean, barely touching the throttle, and it is just, boom, gone. Oh, so good. Now, I realise not much in the way of no, mechanicking has gone on in this episode. But you guys wanted to see this car drive for the first time. Weird noise. And it is driving for the first time. And I thought that was too big of an event to hold back. That is the landmark we've been waiting for. This car is now a car again, not just a big lawn ornament. Oh, it's so, so good. I am so happy. I've put about 15, 20 miles on this thing so far today. And apart from a couple of little drips under the, the uh, bonnet when oh, on the floor, when I was parked in that gravel car park a minute ago, which I think might be coolant. Now, I'm not gonna say it's been flawless because there's been a few little tiny teething troubles, but as first drives go, 
this has been pretty amazing and I'm I'm very very happy indeed because this is such a momentous occasion in furious land the P6 V8 which people thought was never going to go which they thought I should just get rid of sell it break it apart set fire to it I've thought that myself a couple of times it's here it's on the road and it's driving oh, it's frankly a miracle I think it's safe to say this is now my new favourite thing. Just the noise it makes is, oh wow, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. It's, it's really good. One last squirt then home. Okay, it's actually pretty brisk. <laughs> I'm still only going to turn off 1,000 RPM, it's not even pushing the car at all. Oh my goodness, this car is so good. Admittedly, the wipers, despite being new blades, are utter rubbish, so now it's starting to rain, I don't want to get it home. Oh, this car is brilliant. Oh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe. If you love this car as much as I think I do, then do head over to furiousdriving.co.uk where we've got mugs and magnets, and possibly even stickers as well of this thing which look really cool. Anyway, thank you for watching. Join us again next time, driving something. Oh, is that the wrong kind of video? Join me again soon. Just smiling a lot. Happy dance, yay!